Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the Comfy Cozy Cardigan. So the first thing you'll need for this project is the free written pattern, which is available on my blog, and you can get it by clicking the link in the description box below. This pattern covers all women's sizes from extra small to a 5X, and follows all of the standard sizing from the Craft Yarn Council of America. You can also purchase a large print ad-free printable PDF version of the pattern in my Ravelry store. So here are the things that you're going to need for this project. You're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I'm using Lion Brand Heartland. This is a really soft, flexible, kind of drapey fluid worsted weight yarn. And it has a really nice kind of almost silky feel to it. Very soft. And this colorway is called Great Sand Dunes. It's kind of like a honey colored beige almost with a little bit of cream in it. It's a little bit heathered. So this is the yarn that I'm using. I have several balls of this. You will need to check the written pattern to see how many skeins that you will need for the size you want to make. You will also need a size I or five and a half millimeter crochet hook, a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, and a measuring tape. So this is a very simple pattern. This is essentially made of three modified rectangles. So this is pretty beginner friendly. As long as you are comfortable with making rectangles, then you could make this sweater. So what we're going to start with is the body of the sweater and this sweater is worked vertically. So instead of working in rows back and forth this way, we're going to work in rows up and down this way. This sweater has very little shaping involved and the only special stitches are in the ribbing. So this is a pretty simple and quick and easy type of project. So we are going to begin our sweater by starting the bodice panel or it's kind of like the, the front and back all worked as one piece. And we begin by working that, um, starting along the one side and then working vertically in vertical rows across to the other side. And we're going to begin with a row of foundation half double crochet, which is a pretty simple method of working the first row of crochet and the foundation chain at the same time. And the reason we're doing this is because foundation half double crochet leaves a nice stretchy edge and that's what we want in this case for this project because if we were to use a foundation chain like you would normally work it then we'd end up with one side with the regular foundation chain to be you know not have any stretch on that edge and then the other side would have enough stretch on that edge on the other side so we want to make sure that both the side we start on and the side we end on have the same amount of stretch. So what I'm gonna do is chain two, like so. And this first two chains right here does not count as a stitch, but we're gonna start working the foundation half double crochet. So to do this, I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into that first chain, which is the second one from the hook, I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop. Now up to this point, this looks like a regular half double crochet, but we're going to do a little step in between to create the chain stitch that goes underneath it. So we're going to yarn over and pull through one loop, which creates the chain stitch that we are, quote, working into as we go along. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. So that little step has created a half double crochet and the chain stitch that it's worked in in one step. So I'm going to show you that again. We're going to yarn over and then for all of the following half double crochets or foundation half double crochets, we're going to insert into the two strands across the bottom of the previous stitch, which basically looks, if this is the top, it looks very similar to the top of a regular uh, crocheted stitch. So now I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through one loop, then yarn over and pull through two loops. So one more time, I'm gonna yarn over, insert into the two strands across the bottom of the previous foundation half double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, 
and then yarn over pull through three. So I'm going to keep working those foundation half double crochets until I have the number specified in the pattern for the size that I'm making. And since I'm making the size small, the pattern tells me that I need a total of 178 foundation half double crochet. All right, so that is my first row of the foundation half double crochet. This is gonna seem really long at first, but it actually isn't because it's this entire strip will start at the hem of the sweater in the front, go up over the shoulder, back down your back, and to the hem of the sweater in the back. That's how our rows are going, is vertically, going in a vertical direction and working sideways. So now I'm gonna show you how to work row two. And first we're gonna start by chaining two and then we turn. And we're going to work a little something different for the first few stitches of each row. This is called the ribbing half double crochet. And this is just like a regular half double crochet. We just change the place that we work it into. So normally when we crochet, we insert into this V-shaped portion up here, which is the top of the stitch. But instead of doing that, we're going to turn the crochet, you know, with this, the side that is facing us up. And that is technically the back side of the previous row. And instead of inserting here, we're going to pay close attention to this little horizontal strand of yarn that runs across the what is technically the back of the previous row of stitches and we're going to insert into that strand so not these two up here but this horizontal strand down here which is on the side of the stitches so i'm going to do my regular yarn over insert into that horizontal strand and work a regular half double crochet so i did that in the same stitch that my chain two was coming out of the chain two is not counted as a stitch. So now it tells me to rib half double crochet into the next 11 stitches. So again, instead of inserting into the top of the stitch like we normally would, we're going to come down here and find this horizontal strand that goes across the side of the stitch or what is facing us as the front and work into that with our half double crochet. So again, we just insert into this horizontal strand and work a half double crochet and it is a single strand we're not inserting into the horizontal strand plus the first strand of the top of the stitch just that horizontal strand and then we'll finish out our total of 11 stitches like that 11 more uh, rib half double crochets after the first one and that is going to start our ribbing and if we turn this over you can see that it makes a nice ridge of the tops of those stitches from the previous row. And this will create the ribbing on the front hem and the back hem of our sweater. So now the pattern tells me to half double crochet normally into the next X amount of stitches. It will depend on the size you're working, but for the size small, I'm supposed to half double crochet normally into the next 154 stitches. So now that I've gotten to my 154 half double crochets, now we're going to work another 12 of those ribbed half double crochets. So I'm going to rib half double crochet into the next 12 stitches. And that is the end of the second row. So now we will continue to repeat row two until we have the correct number of rows specified in the pattern. So for the size small, I need to work a total of 16 rows. So I have to keep repeating row two until my work is a total of 16 rows long. All right, so I have finished the first section of the bodice of my sweater. And this section begins at the side seam of the sweater and extends up to the, um, this is like the shoulder portion that stops at the neck. 
So now we're going to make the section that splits the front and makes it into a cardigan where the, there's two um, panels on the front and all, all one panel on the back. Whereas in most sweaters, you would do that as three separate pieces. This one, we do it all at once, all as one piece. So now I'm going to show you the section that we make to go across the width of the back of the neck. This is part of the back of the cardigan. So we're gonna start by working row three. And this is very similar to all the rows that we worked before. We're just only going to work across part of the previous row. So we're going to chain two and turn, which I've already turned. And then we're going to do the ribbed half double crochet into the same stitch and in the next 11 stitches. All right, and now we're going to work a regular half double crochet in a bunch of stitches, and then we're going to stop at a certain point, and that place where we stop is going to be the back of the neck of the sweater. All right, so now the pattern tells me that for the size that I'm making, the size small, I need to work a regular half double crochet in each of the next 68 stitches. All right, so I've only worked up to the point where I have finished the 68 stitches. For the size you're working, it may be a different number, but we're only working a little bit less than halfway across the row because this is where we're going to stop, and the next section is going to stop at this point, and that's going to be the back of the neck edge. So now I'm going to work the next two rows that we're going to be repeating for the rest of this section. So for row four, I'm going to chain two and turn. I'm going to half double crochet in the same stitch and in the next, for my size, I'm supposed to work into the next 67 stitches. Again, just do the number of stitches that the pattern says for your size. All right, so now I'm supposed to do the rib half double crochet into the next 12 stitches. All right, so that is row four, and that is again a partial row. So here was the beginning of it, and we ended up here at the ribbing edge. So now we're going to work row five, which is chain two and turn. And again, we're going to rib half double crochet into the same stitch and into the next 11 stitches. All right, and now we're going to do a regular half double crochet in each of the next, for my size, 68 stitches. But again, if you are working a different size, then it will tell you whatever number of stitches you need to work to get across the rest of your row. All right, so that is the end of row five. So now you can see we're starting to create this next section of rows that is the section that kind of grows across the width of the back of the neck. And so this is going to be our front uh, panel on the one side over here. We're going to work a section across the back of the neck width and then work another longer section for the other front panel side. So now we're just going to keep repeating rows four and five until you have the correct number of rows for this center section, ending with row four. So I'm going to keep repeating rows four and five for my size for a total of 16 rows for this center section, including row three. That's counted as the center section as well. And I need to be ending with row four. So all sizes, you're going to need to end with row four. And, and row four is going to make you end up at the ribbing end of the sweater, which is what we want. All right, so I have finished repeating those two rows to make the center section back here. And I've ended on row four. And basically what we have is here's our front panel right here. This is the center of the back panel. And once the whole sweater is finished, we're going to add a pretty wide edging to this front panel all the way around the back of the neck 
and down the other side of the front to make kind of a wide edging that will make the front panels um, meet in the center to be wide enough. So now what we're going to do is create the other side of the sweater, which is the other uh, long section like this one. And what we're going to do is work row six. So to do this, we're going to chain two and turn. We're going to do our rib half double crochet into the same stitch and in the next 11 stitches. All right. And now we're going to half double crochet all the way across this entire row, just like we've been doing. But then we're going to continue on and add some more stitches. So for the size that I'm making, the pattern tells me to half double crochet in each of the next 68 stitches. And that will take me all the way to the other end of the previous row. All right, so there's the last half double crochet there. And now what we're going to do is begin working some more of those foundation half double crochets to make this row extend longer to create the rest of that, you know, long front panel on the other side. So what I'm going to do is yarn over, insert into the same stitch I just worked in, yarn over, pull up a loop, then I'm going to yarn over, pull through the first loop only, and then yarn over, pull through all three. So that creates a foundation half double crochet that is connected to the last stitch of the previous row I just worked into. So for the size that I'm working, the pattern tells me to work another 97 foundation half double crochets. And that will create the rest of my row. All right, so I have finished all of the foundation half double crochet for that row. So now you can see that that row six just kind of continues to extend past the back neck edge all the way up to where my hook is right now. And this row is now the same length as this section is over here, which was our first section. So now to finish up the body of the sweater, we're just going to keep repeating row two until this section has the correct number of rows in it for the size that you're making and for the size that I'm making, the size small, I'm supposed to repeat row two 15 times. All right, so I have finished working all the rest of the rows. As you can see right here, this is my finished piece. This is the back hem of the sweater. And then as we move it up, you can see here's the back of the neckline and the front panels all the way down to the ribbing. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this off and then we will move on to the sleeves. All right, so now we are ready to start working on the sleeve. And what we're going to do before we start actually crocheting the sleeve is we're going to leave a very long tail, about a couple yards of a tail, before we start our work. Because this is going to be the tail that we use to do a pretty good amount of the seaming in this sweater. So now that I have my very long tail, I can make my slip knot like so. And we're going to do another um, row of foundation half double crochet to start the sleeve. And we're going to chain two. We're going to yarn over, insert into that first chain, the one right next to the slip knot, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, and yarn over, pull through all three loops. And again, we're going to yarn over, insert into the base of the previous foundation half double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through three loops. So I'm going to continue to foundation half double crochet until I have the correct number of stitches specified in the pattern for my size. So the pattern tells me that after that first foundation half double crochet, I'm supposed to work another 63 foundation half double crochet for a total of 64 stitches. All right, so there is my foundation half double crochet for row one. Now this is probably not going to look like it's long enough for the entire sleeve, but just remember that this sweater is a drop shoulder style, meaning the bodice panels are going to extend over the top of the shoulder because with this sweater, we don't have like a regular 
armhole cutout in the bodice of the sweater for a set in sleeve. So the shoulder seam where the seam of the, the top of the sleeve meets the shoulder of the sweater, that is not going to hit right on top of the shoulder. It's going to hit a few inches below the top of the shoulder on the upper arm. So that's why the sleeve does not look as long as you would think it would need to be to be a full length long sleeve. So now we're going to work rows two and three and rows two and three are the rows that we're going to be repeating for most of the sleeve. So again, this is going to be the side of the sleeve. This is not the top or the bottom. We're starting at one side of the sleeve and working our way across to the other side. And what's going to make this sleeve tapered Instead of using increases, normally you would start at the bottom and increase your stitches to make it wider as you go up, or you would start at the top and decrease to make it narrower as you go down. But we're starting on the side edge and we're not using any increases or decreases. This is still a plain and simple rectangle. But what we're going to use to make the top of the sleeve wider and the bottom narrower is we're going to use two different height stitches. So we're going to use some half double crochets and some double crochets which are taller and those taller stitches being at the top since we're working in rows this way will make the sleeve wider at the top whereas the shorter stitches at the bottom will make the sleeve narrower at the bottom. So now we're going to go ahead and start row two. We're going to chain two and turn. Now we're going to work a rib half double crochet into the same stitch and into the next nine stitches. And you should now have a total of 10 stitches of your ribbed half double crochet. And for the size that I'm making, the pattern tells me I need to work a regular half double crochet in the next 27 stitches. And that number will depend on the size that you're making. All right, so there's my 27. And now the pattern tells me to work a double crochet into the next 27 stitches. And that is the last one. So now you can see that this row is taller in the double crochet section than it is in the half double crochet section. So you should still have, for the size that I'm making, a total of 64 stitches. Again, that will be dependent on the size that you're making. Some sizes will have a different number of stitches. And now we're going to work row three. So for row three, because this is the top edge and we're using double crochets towards the top, we're going to chain three and turn. We're gonna double crochet in the same stitch. And for the size that I'm making, I'm supposed to double crochet in the next 35 stitches. All right, so there's the 35. And now I'm supposed to half double crochet in the next 18 stitches. All right, and now I am going to rib half double crochet into the next 10 stitches. All right, so there is my third row. So if we lay the ends of this row on top of each other, you can see that the end with the double crochets on it is definitely wider than the end with the ribbed half double crochets. So now what we're gonna do is continue to repeat rows two and three and the pattern will tell you how many times you're supposed to repeat those two rows. But for the size that I'm making, I need to repeat rows two and three 11 more times. All right, so I have finished repeating rows two and three, and now the pattern tells me to work row two one more time. All right, so I repeated row two one more time, and now we're going to work row four, which is the final row for our sleeve. And to do this, we're just going to chain two and turn and then for the size that I'm making the pattern tells me to half double crochet into the same stitch and into the next 53 stitches all right and now I'm going to rib half double crochet into the next 10 stitches all right and that is the end of our sleeve so now all we're going to do is leave about a yard of a tail, cut the yarn, and tie off. So just repeat the same instructions for the sleeve to make the second sleeve. 
All right, so all of the main pieces of our sweater are finished and I went ahead and blocked all of my pieces. I steam blocked mine because this is acrylic yarn, but you can use whatever blocking method is recommended for the yarn you're using. And now we're going to assemble all the pieces. So I've got my two sleeves right here. We're gonna do them one at a time. So I'm gonna set the other one aside for right now. So here is the wider part at the top of our sleeve. And then here's the narrow part down here, which is our cuff. And then we have long tails at the ends of both sides, but we have a very long tail, about a couple yards long at the top edge of our sleeve. And this is what we're gonna use to attach the sleeve to the body and to sew the side seam of the body of the sweater. So we're going to take this wider edge at the top. We're gonna to bring those top corners together and line them up. And then we're going to find that halfway point on that top edge, which is right here, and put a stitch marker there to mark it and know where that center point is because this is going to go at the top of the shoulder. So I'm going to set this to the side for a minute. And here's the body of the sweater. Here's the back part, and here are the two side parts or the front panels that kind of come over into the front for the cardigan part. So we're going to come down here to the hem of the sweater and line up the front on the one side at the hem down here with the back hem on that same side, and we're going to count pairs of stitches. We want to find which point on this whole long edge is the center so that we can line it up with the sleeve. So I'm going to count pairs of stitches until we reach the point where the center of this edge is. And since I have an even number of stitches, it's going to be in between two stitches. I'm not counting how many stitches there are. I'm just pairing stitches and kind of stacking them up against each other. And that will help line them up so I can be sure I don't have more stitches on the front than on the back or vice versa. All right, so we know now that the center point is right here in between these two stitches. So I'm going to take my sleeve and I want the side where the tops of the stitches that make that ribbing, the side where the V-shapes kind of point up like this, to be on the right side. So I'm gonna make sure that side is up and then I'm gonna take this stitch marker and insert it through the center point on the sleeve and the center point on the shoulder, like so. So now we know that that's the center. That's going to be the top of the shoulder. We can lay like this where the sleeve and the body of the sweater are both folded in half at the shoulder point. And we're going to kind of butt these edges up against each other, making sure they are lined up. And we're going to thread the long yarn tail from the top of the sleeve through our yarn needle. And now we're going to sew the sleeve to what will be the armhole of the sweater. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the sweater so that it's laying flat. And whip stitch, I'm gonna start from this corner where my tail is and whip stitch the sleeve edge to the stitches on the body of the sweater, making sure that my marker is still lined up straight. And as I do this, I'm going to count how many stitches there are between where I start and where that stitch marker is. So then when I stitch the other half of the sleeve seam, I will know exactly how many stitches down that corner of the other side of the sleeve should go. All right, I'm to my marker, so I can stitch through where the marker is. And I've used about 21 stitches of the body edge for that half of the sleeve. So now when I work the other half of the sleeve seam, I can count 21 stitches more on that side and put a marker in that stitch, the 21st stitch, and through the other corner of the sleeve. And as long as we stitch this up evenly, our corner will line up right here. And when we sew the rest of our seams, it will line up with the sleeve corner on the other side. All right, so we are down to the last stitch. I'm going to take the marker out and stitch through where the marker was. I'm gonna take another stitch in that same place and wrap the yarn around the needle to make a knot, and then I will pull the needle through. We're gonna take this tail out of the yarn needle and save it for later when we sew up the side seam, but first we need to sew the sleeve seam. 
So now I'm going to thread the tail from the sleeve cuff through the needle and fold the sleeve so that the right side is still out, but the two long edges of the sleeve are together. So we're going to whip stitch these edges together, but I wanna show you a trick to sew up the ribbing invisibly. We're gonna take our first stitch through the tops of the stitches, but these stitches on this edge would have been the stitches that create a ribbing column right here. And so I'm going to go around each of those stitches instead of going through them. So I'm going to insert into the previous stitch I came out of on that first side, and then go back through the next stitch on that side, and then I can take a stitch on the other side. So again, I'm gonna insert into that same stitch I came out of and then come out on the next stitch before stitching into the other side. And that will create the ribbing column even on our seam line. So I'm gonna keep using that method on the remaining stitches of the ribbing. So now we're going to use a whip stitch to sew up the rest of that seam. So because we've used the foundation half double crochet instead of a regular foundation chain, then all of our foundation edges are not only stretchy, but they also have the same look as the top of a regular row of stitches. So that makes it easier to stitch the edges together because it looks like a row of stitches on both sides. So we can easily make sure we're sewing them together evenly. Now I'm down to the last few stitches of that sleeve seam. And once I get to the last stitch, I'm gonna take another stitch through the corners of the sleeve wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it through to make a knot. So now I'm going to take that tail off of the needle and thread that long tail from the first seam from the original sleeve to body of sweater seam and put that back through the yarn needle. So to do the side seam, we're going to open up the sweater so that the side edge of the back and the side edge of the front are next to each other. And we're going to whip stitch the seam all the way down to the ribbing part. So now I'm down to the ribbing and I'm gonna use that same method again, where we insert into the previous stitch from the first side and come out on the next one, the next stitch, before taking a stitch on the other side. Then we're going to go back into the stitch we just came out of on the first side, come out of the next stitch, and then take another stitch on the other side. And I'm going to keep doing this until I get down to the edge. So there is the last stitch, and I'm going to take one more stitch across the gap of those two edges. I'm gonna wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it through to make a knot. And that is all of the seaming for the one side of the sweater. So I'm gonna weave in all the tails on this side of the sweater and then repeat all of those same assembly steps, all the seams on the other sleeve and side seams on the other side of the sweater. All right, so now that we have the sweater put together, we have it all sewn up and assembled. I've got it folded in half here. We're going to kind of lay it out flat, like so with the front side facing us. And what we're gonna do is work a very wide edging that runs all the way up one side of the front, around the back of the neck, and then down the other side. So I have some more yarn here, and I'm going to start with the inside of the what is when you're wearing it, the left front. I'm going to have that facing me. It doesn't necessarily matter which side you start on other than to make the ribbing line up correctly, you want to start on a place where the, uh, the ribbing column is, is the first thing closest to the edge instead of the groove in between the ribbing columns because we want our ribbing to continue into this section. All right, so this first part right here is actually a foundation edge. So this is where we started with the foundation half double crochet. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come down over here to this corner 
and I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch and pull up a loop of yarn. Now, if you are a lefty, then you may need to start on the other front side, the other side of the front, to do the uh, ribbing with the ribbing lined up correctly. So again, we just want to make sure that the actual ribbing column is the closest thing to the edge and not the ribbing groove in between the columns. So what we're going to do here is chain two like we normally would. And then we're going to work these ribbing half double crochets just the way we normally do. And when you work into this foundation half double crochet, um, it is upside down foundation half double crochet. But again, foundation half double crochet leaves a row of um, what looks like the top of a row of stitches on the bottom edge. So even when you work into it upside down, it still looks the same. And it even has, it's not the exact same horizontal strand, but it even has that horizontal strand that we work into for the ribbing half double crochet. So I'm going to insert into that. I'm going to go ahead and crochet over my tail as we go. So I'm going to rib half double crochet into the first stitch and into the next 11 stitches. And there is the last one. So as you can see, that now looks identical to the rest of these ribbing um, ridges or columns that we had before. And again, we are doing this with the wrong side facing us. So it's also going to look the same from the right side. So now what we're going to do is just work a regular half double crochet, crocheting over our tail in each of the stitches up the first front edge and then we'll I'll show you how to work across the back neck edge all right and we are right about there so what we're gonna do is we're going to stop when we have one stitch left of our foundation half double crochet edge and the pattern will give you the exact number of stitches that you need to work before you get to this point but in general, we're just stopping one stitch before this corner right here, and we're going to do a double crochet three together into the corner. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into that last stitch of the foundation half double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, I'm going to yarn over, insert into the corner, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, then I'm going to yarn over, insert into the um, the back of the neck edge, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have three partially worked double crochets on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. So now I'm just going to half double crochet evenly across the edge here of the back of the neck. And you just want to make sure that it lays flat and doesn't ripple or bunch. And we're just going to continue to half double crochet across the back neck edge until we get to that corner again. And we're going to leave just a little bit of space at the corner for another double crochet three together. All right, and we have the equivalent of the width of one more stitch before we get to that corner. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into that last little gap or into a uh, into the back neck edge in that little one stitch wide gap. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the corner, pull up a loop and pull through two, yarn over, insert into the first stitch of the other side front, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. So now I'm just going to half double crochet all the way down the other front edge until we get to the ribbing down here. And again, the pattern will give you the, the precise number of stitches that you're going to need to work before you stop to do the ribbing. All right. And now we're going to work a rib half double crochet into the next 12 stitches. So now we're going to kind of repeat the same row. 
but we're just going to work it into the previous row. We're going to chain two and turn, ribbed half double crochet in the same stitch, and in the next 11, and we're going to half double crochet across the side of the, the front edge. And again, the pattern will tell you how many stitches, but we're basically going to stop one stitch before the double crochet three together from the previous row. All right, so there's one stitch left before the double crochet three together from the previous row. So we're going to go ahead and work a double crochet three together. Like so. And now this is the back of the neck. We're going to half double crochet across until we get to one stitch before the next double crochet three together. All right, so there's one stitch left. Now we're gonna work a double crochet three together into that corner. And now we're just going to half double crochet all the way down the other side of the front until we get to the last 12 stitches. All right, we're down to the last 12 stitches and we're going to rib half double crochet into each of those 12 stitches. All right, so that is the end of row two. So we're going to go ahead and repeat row two a couple more times. For the size that I'm making, I'm supposed to repeat row two three more times. All right, so now I have finished repeating that row and we're now going to go on to row three, which is very simple. We're gonna chain two and turn, rib half double crochet into the same stitch and in the next 11 stitches. And now we're just going to half double crochet in each stitch across to the last 12 stitches. All right, so we are down to the last 12 stitches. We're going to rib half double crochet in each of those 12 stitches. All right, so that is row three. Now we're gonna work row four, and row four is the easiest row in the entire sweater. We're just going to chain two and turn, half double crochet in the same stitch and in each stitch across. All right, so that is the end of row four. We've made it all the way across, just plain old half double crochet. And for the size that I'm working, I'm going to work row four, repeat row four, six more times. All right, so now that our sweater is finished, we can just cut the yarn, tie off, and weave in that tail. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you've ever crocheted a sweater in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.